Another thing is, is don't feel, uh, you know, if you've got a bucket list thing to do, get up on stage, be in the chorus. It will take you out of your comfort zone, but it is the best thing you will ever do. It really is, yeah, so. Nice. Welcome to episode three of No Place Like Home. At Cobalt Banker Mallory Custer Realtors, we are committed to sharing the reasons why we live, work, and play where we do. Today we have a real treat in store for you. Uh, one of the iconic organizations in Junction City history. Michelle, do you think they have figured out what it is? I don't know, but it's been around for 70 years. 70 years. We're visiting with members of the Junction City Little Theater, and we have a treat in store for you. So shall we go in and take them in to see what we have on store for them? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. We're here with some of our friends from the Junction City Little Theater. Thank you, ladies, for sure. coming and joining us today. Thanks for coming. Yeah. And we're, we're here with uh, Mary Louise Stahl, Ellen Westerhouse, and Ellie Dillon, who are going to share some something about the, the Little Theater and the history and whatever they can tell us. So, Michelle, go ahead. Well, first of all, tell us a little bit about what is JCLT? It stands for Junction City Little Theater. And the little theater, uh, sometimes those two words together are a surprise to a lot of people. They think it means a building or it means a place. It's just kind of a historic name that um, you find it in a lot of communities, but it's been in Junction City since 1949 when they first started to think up this, this deal. So we became Junction City Little Theater, as I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> so we heard that you're starting the 70th season. Yes. Any other history yes. you can share? How was it started? Uh, 1948, Bettina Coover uh, relocated to Junction City, Kansas from Wichita and she joined the Ladies Reading Club, which is still a, a vibrant organization in town. Uh, went to a bunch of women and said, hey, let's form a, a study group for theater and the rest is history. Um, they did their first production in 1950 called The Happy Journey and it's been quite a happy journey. 70 years later, we are the longest running community theater in the state of Kansas. Continuously Continue. operating. Yes. That's, yes. that's yes. just a point of pride for, ev for everybody in this city. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Well, what types of shows do you have in the little theater and, and uh, where, do you where do you find the performers? Well, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Primarily we do musicals and um, straight uh, regular plays without any music. Um, and the people that work them are local uh, or regional actors and directors and production teams and uh, typically we find shows that uh, work well with our clientele in, this, in the community, that are attracting to the community, something someone would want to come out to and uh, just have a night away from the humdrum and get away for two hours of normal life. and and uh, go into the, in the theater. <laughs> we have such a vibrant community here of, of Junction City and the Fort Riley community. So we have, we have a lot of us that are here that are lifers here, but we have such a wonderful evolving community that brings in lots of amateurs and also professionals mm -hmm. through the military community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it's kind of a swinging door for us, but my goodness, the talent that it brings in. Tell us approximately how many pieces. Oh gosh. We've heard there's thousands. Well, uh, they, we were asked that question, and so we kind of estimated it was over like 8,000 wow. costumes, just in our costume room. Over 1,000 some, 1,500 hats. Uh, that's including the men's hats and the women's hats. We but, emptied two buildings and filled this space that we're sitting in. What a nice problem to have. How does someone get involved with a little theater? or? A family or children. What what are some like? How does that happen? We need photographers, uh, videographers. We need choreographers, set people, costumes. costumes. Mm -hmm. We need directors, vocal directors. We need orchestra. We need anything that you possibly think of. And if you're interested, we're our door is always open. Um, come in and see us, uh, or you can call our office, 238-3871. Our door is always open. It's open to anyone that wants to come in and uh, give us a little bit of their expertise and their talent. Find and us on Facebook. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, that too, that too. So, speaking of shows and, and sponsors, 
There are four shows coming up this year, four right? Four shows, yeah. Tell us about those shows. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm doing the opening show for the 70th season. I'm really excited about it. It's one that I love, not as well known as others. It's called Working a Musical. And it's based on the, the journalistic efforts of Studs Terkel in the city of Chicago in the 1970s. But it was rewritten in 2012, and I always say it's been kicked upstairs. The dancing, the, the music, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Stephen Schwartz, James Taylor, just a vast variety of songs. It's really a, kind of a showcase for working people. And if you've ever worked a day in your life, you find yourself in this show. So that's our opening show in September, and that is followed by... Oklahoma, and that will be directed by Monty Divin and Kay Fisher. And then we will follow up in February with Barefoot in the Park, which is a just a regular drama comedy, no music, uh, and we got a snippet of that at our patron party and what a fun show that's going to be. And we have a young man directing that from Manhattan, so we really are a regional theater. Yeah. yeah. Really, re people are attracted. And along, and along with that, we are going to um, support uh, JC Voices United, kind of a, a nice little group uh, starting up um, for a community uh, vocal group, and they will be performing at our Saturday performances for Barefoot in the Park. And then we'll follow up in April with Mamma Mia. Who's we'll directing, directing that? that. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to it's been on my bucket list for a long time. So um, And who's costuming every, every show? Single show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're excited wow. for the the season. Um, you know, it's like Marilyn Louise said, it's with patrons in this community, the people that fill the seats, it's uh, our sponsors and those are the people that make Junction City Little Theater what it is. So, and YouTube been on stage, so oh my you know, goodness, you, yeah, you, don't you, act you know. like you haven't been there. Yeah. Well, uh, that sounds like a great 70th season, mm -hmm. and we know people are looking forward to that. So, Ellie, <laughs> what is some information or something you'd like people to know about JCLT that they might not already know? I think there's a couple of things. First, um, even though we work collaboratively with CL Hoover Opera House, which is a beautiful venue and our home. Uh, we are the theater or the anchor theater group there. Uh, we are a separate entity from from the Opera House. We are a 501c3 uh, organization. We work solely on uh, the people in the seats, the people that are sponsoring us, the corporate sponsors, uh, the people that we get out to see our shows. That's how we that's how we survive. Um, but we are two separate entities working collaboratively together, and I think that's really important. Uh, I have one last question, oh, burning question. Tell us about the top tops. <laughs> I, I am out of this. Out of this. Not a top top yet. <laughs> the, um, and and I try to avoid that because <laughs> not I mean not the group because we're a fantastic group. Oh my but gosh, they do so much. As we said when we moved into this facility, mm -hmm. we knew there was a bunch of us that belonged to the guild. We knew somebody had to take home on a regular basis and get it to where it needed to be. And I think it was, uh, we said, well, hey, we're gonna meet up Tuesdays. Tuesdays at the Annex, and I think it was Sandy Wong said, Oh, well, but it anyway, doesn't matter. She said, Tuesdays at the Annex, Tatas, you know, and so that's how our name got okay. chosen. <laughs> so we're known as the Tatas. And us as Tatas have put on shows for the library. Oh, really? We put on shows for the ladies' reading club oh with our gosh, costumes, man. with our hats, and things like this. And it's a dream, I think, of Sue Hornberger that someday we're going to have a fashion show just from costumes that we have here. And a lot of people in the community will come because they'll identify what they've given. You know, we went to the library fashion. once with a with the costume show, and we rolled our theater piano right down the street yeah. to the library. <laughs> And the piano still works, but anyway, um, <laughs> we've just had a lot of fun, and they've done a lot of painting of sets. Well, thank you very much. The community, this the theater, the Junction City Little Theater, serves in a very, very important function in, in this community, and we look forward to having the four shows this year. And, and appreciate it makes all of it a work. great place to live. Yeah. It really does. We're yeah. thriving, and we want you to be part of us. So come on, come on board, and be part of our family. So. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Did you learn something new about the Junction City Little Theater? I did. Good. It's what a great group of people and an outstanding organization. Excellent. Yeah, I think it's time for us to head back to the office. We need to get some tickets ordered for those shows. We do. All right, you know what to do. I do know what to do. Let's do it. Ready?